Now, the final step of this tutorial would be to automate this process a little bit. So let's say for the argument's sake, I decided to change something in this application. Let's just say that I wanted to add a header saying that this is an easy IO application, right? How would I deploy those changes to the server? When we deployed it for the first time, I executed like seven commands maybe on the different consoles in order to make sure that everything runs properly. Obviously, that is not the greatest way to do that because it takes loads of time. And we can automate this whole process with the help of a shell script. Okay, so let's build our deploy script. I also already have a deploy sh script that I was using during the testing of this video. So let's get rid of this one and write it from the scratch. And also let's get rid of the uh, archive that we used to deploy the first version of our application. Okay, now we're in the good state. Now let's start writing the script. I'll call it deploy, deploy.sh. Okay, great. So I'll start my script from hashbang, obviously, because it is a shell script. So next, what, I'll, what I need to do is to type all those commands that I was using in my console to deploy the application. So first thing that we did, we compressed the, uh, all the files in the EasyIO archive. CZF, compress zip file, file called EasyIO tar gz. Then we were adding few files there. There was main.js, not mail.js. You need to make sure that you're typing those properly, otherwise the deployment will not happen. We used package.json. Then there was yarn lock, public, and a file called license. Now, with this file in place, we copied this file over to the remote host. And to find out what was the remote host, we need again to copy paste the IP address. I hate copying IP addresses. That's why at the end of this video, I'll show you how to set up the domain name to make it all pretty and beautiful. But for now, let's just type the domain name. So SCP, we're copying easy IO tar GZ. Where do we copy it? We copy it to this host into the home folder. Awesome. So that should give us the file on the remote host. Let's just make sure that this whole thing works. Uh, by the way, at the end, since we don't need this file anymore, let's just delete it. Let's not leave any garbage after this script. Delete easy io tar gz. Okay, so let's see if this file works. So let's give it x permissions, execute permissions to deploy sh, and now let's run it. Okay, it looks like something happened and it uh, deployed the fresh version of the file to a remote host. So let's just double check. Let's remove easyio tar gz from the home folder. Now let's run this script. And now this file is back in our home folder. The next part of our deploy script is a little bit tricky because after we copied the application to a remote host, we need to run the other commands on that remote host. And in order to do that, we'll use our ssh command because with help of ssh, we can also execute a bunch of commands remotely from the script. Okay, so what we will do, we will type it in this funny way, ssh, then the IP of a host. And remember, if I'm running this as my user, it will be executed as yuri at 188 blah blah blah. And then we give here a little marker and ssh. So what this means is that until and ssh, everything here will be streamed to the ssh command, right? It will be streamed to a remote host. So everything that I type here will be executed there, not on my local machine. So on the other machine, what I need to do, I need to do several things. Firstly, I need to do pm2 stop the running application. I don't want to redeploy the running app. I don't know what, what will happen. So I'm typing stop easy IO. Okay, now I need to get rid of the folder that I used for the older version of the application. So I say, I'm saying rimref and easy IO. Okay, now I've got rid of the folder and I have my easy IO tar gz there on the host. So what I do, I say tar extract 
file uh, easy io dar gz and minus c put it to the folder called easy io so the same folder as before and of course i need to remember to create this folder before i extract something to it otherwise extraction will fail now we need to re-download all the dependencies on that host because we didn't copy a node modules folder. Why we didn't do that? Because dependencies are pretty much system dependent. Some of them will be different from Mac OS and for Linux. And if you just copy paste everything from one system to the other, there is no guarantee that it will work unless the systems are exactly the same. Okay, so what we will do, we will go to that easy IO folder and we will run here yarn install awesome now once yarn finishes its installation the application is ready for a restart and we just say pm2 start easy io okay and finally we need to tell that this will be the end of uh, our command so we type here and ssh Amazing, so this should restart the script and uh, just to make sure I'm not leaving any garbage behind right here after I extracted the files, I don't need the archive anymore. So what I'll add here is remove easy io tar, tar gz. And now I can save this and rerun it. Let's see if it works. Deploy sh. So it's compressing. Now it's SSH is going, the easy IO is stopped, Yarn is downloading the dependencies remotely, now it says it's online and it should be working again. So let's see, let's refresh our page, easy IO is working, but it's not clear that something has changed. So now let's do one more experiment, let's go to public index.html and do something here. Let's say I will add a big h1 header here saying easy io and now let's deploy this new version so i run again deploy sh wait for a second and it looks good so it's online again let's restart our browser and the browser says that well the new version is there and you just did it with one hit in your terminal one script that did all the magic behind and this application is running and managed by pm2 on the remote server on digital ocean on centos which is great already so you've got your application running <music>